live from the Cactus Creek at Ibri. He is the king of prime time, Ghana's undisputed entertainment laureate, and still the youngest old man in Ghana. Put your hands together, show some love for the indefatigable K. KSM show. We got me back. We got a couple of folks that uh, I was detaining him because now upon our back, the apple was flowing, so we had to detain him small. So, so please let me take a short commercial break. When we come back, we're going to continue the discussion with with other interesting angles. Stick around, folks. By the way, Black Rasta, thank you for staying. Yes, we'll be sir. right with you. My pleasure. Stick around, folks. We'll be right back. KSM show. Is it the luxurious rooms? Or the serene green surroundings? Is it the tempting swimming pool? Or the classy conference room? Or the cute gift shop? Maybe it's our chef's array of cooking delights. Whichever way, it's all about Cactus Creek. A most respected hotel. 055 039 5007. KSM show. This is your African King of Comedy, Michael Blacks, and you're watching King of Prime Time, the KSM show right here, mother sucker. We're back, man. Black Rasta, you are on fire. Mm. You know, I'm going to slow it down small before I come back to it. Because there's something I've wanted to ask you. I heard that you are actually an ordained minister. Yes, I am. It's true. Uh, yes, an ordained man of God, a minister of God uh, at the Breakthrough Family Ministries, Bishop Osetutu Takrade. Wow. Yeah. My journey has been very, very miraculous. I didn't believe in anything Bible. I mean, I've read so much about the Bible, the writers, uh, you know, and all those people who contributed to the Bible. There was nothing you could tell me about the Bible that was believable. I mean, I was born Muslim, so, well, Muslims are also asked to believe in the Bible. If you don't believe in the Bible, then you are not a good Muslim. But Muslims also believe that the Bible has been tampered with, and for that matter, it's lost its credibility in these times. But we must believe in the concept of the original Bible, you know, which we don't have right now. So KSM, cut a long story short, a time came when I started having dreams, wild dreams. I would dream that there would be an earthquake in this country and within days, bam, earthquake. I had a dream that Venezuela was in a certain kind of a, a 3D, you know, Venezuela written 3D, bouncing on water like that. You know, and all of a sudden it broke into two. I said, ah, is there going to be a flood? Two months exactly. Venezuela went into this deep crisis to the point that it had to catch dogs and cats on the street to feed. Some of them were running to Colombia to be able to get food rationing and all that. Meanwhile, Venezuela used to be that big, strong country that had so much oil and so on and so forth. I saw so many different things. And I was wondering what was happening to me. I dreamt I saw myself reading the Bible. 
books that I never knew existed in the Bible. I saw that. And then when I woke up, I took the Bible, went into those books. The same verses and chapters I read, the same thing I saw in my dream. I saw this. I said, ah, this must be some mm. different power mm. from somewhere. So I went into some reading to find out what it was. I didn't want to commit to anything. Then one day I was at the Accra Mall. There was a lady walking in front of me. You know, all of a sudden I had a certain name in my head. When I repeated the word, the name, she turned back and said, Bra, who frame me? You know? Do you remember the name you mentioned? Yes, I think it was a queer or something. A queer. You heard the queer. name? Yes, in your I head? heard the name, a queer. And surprisingly, this girl was even a Nordner. How could a Nordner be called a queer? So when she walked away, I went into the shop, saw her again trying to buy something. I went and paid for the thing. And I asked her, but you speak with a Northern accent. How come you're called a queer? So, oh, when uh, she was born, her mother actually named her after a certain woman who was a friend. Mm. And she was a queer. Things like that, KSM. So I went to a bookshop, a Christian bookshop, and I asked them about prophecy, blah, blah, blah. And they introduced me to a prophet called Prophet Bernard L. Bernard. I had never heard that name. What I was not even again? interested. Yes. Bernard, Bernard L. Bernard. A Ghanaian? A Ghanaian. Fanti man. Prophet Bernard L. Bernard. I had never heard the name. I was not interested in any of those names. All I wanted was to have an answer to what I was going through. And somebody suggested at the bookshop that this was a great prophet. I should talk to him. She gave me the number and I called him. He answered. And I said, well... I'm going through A, B, C, D, and somebody at the bookshop said, you would help explain. They said, is that the black raster I know? Are you sure? Are you really coming to talk to me or something else? I said, no, he I'm knew coming of you. to talk to you. He had heard about me from Takradi where I was doing my radio. He knew me as a very vehement fighter of the Bible and all that the Bible stood for. So he was scared that I was coming to attack him or something. I went to his church, he invited me, I went and sat down uninterested. When I finished, he told me, oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't really talk to you, but can you come to my house over the weekend? I didn't want to go. I went to the house and the dream started, continued over and over. What me were you dreaming reading about the, now? Reading the Bible. And I was hearing the voice of God talk to me and tell me that, listen, this is the new faith I want you to take. I am the one telling you this. I mean, I wouldn't lie. See? Mm -hmm. So these were the things I was going through. Seeing things. This earthquake could happen here. Hey, a plane crash would happen here. I remember my mom heard that I was going through that. And she asked if I needed psychiatric help. Mm -hmm. I said, well, let's see. Yesterday I had a dream that there was a plane crash in Tamale. Let's see. Uh, if it doesn't happen, then you can take me to the asylum. The following day it happened. Inusa, Honorable Inusa was on the plane. It crashed internally, and it was news all over the place. She was the one who even called me. I didn't know that uh, her the plane, plane crashed, crashed. Oh, and she got scared that her son was probably becoming something else. So Bernard L. Bernard invited me to his house. Long story cut short. I sat down like this. He surrounded me with seven or eight or nine of his young prophets. He said, Black Rasta, I may not be able to see everything, but these are young prophets who would be able to go into the spirit and tell you things? And they were firing at me one after the other. Telling me things saying? about me. Good. This one said, I see that you're going to be going to America within 90 days. And in America, you're going to be teaching in some universities. Blah, blah, blah. Your eyes are no longer the eyes of human beings. They are the eyes of eagles. That's what they told you. That's what the man told me. I said, what do you mean? Eagle eyes. It means you're going to be seeing from afar. You will see into the spirit. Hey! <laughs> I said, really? Of course, at that time, I had started having serious itches around my eyes, and I thought I was probably losing it. Then when it came to Bernard L. Bernard's turn, he gave me a prophecy that shocked me all my life. KSM, he took me to when I was two years old. Two years? Two. And said? In 1976. He told me, Black Rasta, in 1976, you, your mother carried you on her back and took you to a place. When she went in there, you were struggling behind her to come down. And her sister 
told her she should release you because you were probably too hot at the back. You know how nerds carry their babies at the back. And so she put me on the floor. Do you remember? No, two years. I couldn't have remembered. So I'm going to get there. Now, she left me there and she was talking to her sister like this. And I was behind her. Whilst they were talking, she turned to pick me up and I wasn't there anymore. So the sister said, oh, probably he crawled into one of those empty rooms. So look into those rooms, all those rooms that are empty. And truly, when she went into the rooms, I was sitting in there, according to Bernard L. Bernard, sitting with a certain old man. In the room? In the room, talking to the old man. Yes, talking to the old man. A two-year-old is talking to an old man, and they are laughing. So my mother said when she saw that, she was shocked. Who was this old man? Good. The old man was a priest, a certain, excuse my language, fetish priest. Because in those days, anybody who didn't believe in Christianity and Islam was a fetish. Mm. He was invited into the house year after year by the landlady of that house to come and pray for the whole house. So he had come on his tent. And when my mother went to pick me up, that man said, leave him, he's my friend. Come to see, we're having a good conversation. When you came, didn't you realize that he was struggling behind you to come down? He wanted to come and see me. Case me, it sounds like an Anansi story. It does. When Bernard told me this, he asked me, is your mother alive? Thank God for my mother. I was, at the time, 40 years or so, when Bernard told me this story. Or 42, thereabout. Yeah, 42. Today I'm getting to 50. So I called my mom and I put it on speaker. Mom, is it true that at the age of two you took me to a certain house and then uh, there was an old man in that house and I was sitting with the woman? And, and, and it was on speaker. On speaker. So Bernard was listening. All his prophets were eight, nine prophets were there. Bernard L. Bernard himself was there. And Bernard L. Bernard was listening. My mother was speaking the gomba. And I had to make her speak English because I wanted all of them to, to understand. understand. There she even told me things that Bernard didn't tell me. The old man where he came from, he came from a village called Jilin, just off the Tamale Road there, towards Yape and those areas. I went to look for that old man, he's been gone. I mean, that was 40 years, 42 years back then. He had died. And Bernard was listening to the whole thing. My mother told me who the sister even was. That she went to her elder sister. And that she told my father this story. And together they decided that they should keep it to themselves. But there was a warning the old man gave them that don't let this boy be crying. Anytime he cries, the heavens are going to hear. And you would have punishment on you. Especially, don't hit his head. Don't hit the head. Don't hit the head. If you want to even punish him, make sure you punish him and he doesn't cry. Because if he cries, there will be trouble for you. And don't hit his head. So my father and mother decided they would not tell me. Until I was 42, they had forgotten. It took Bernard L. Bernard. Would you remember the conversation you had with the old man? No, I don't. I don't even remember what happened with the old man and mm. oh, nothing. You don't even remember Never. Anything. It's my mother who told me this. Two years later, she passed on. Today, I would have called her on this show. So that you would hear her. She was a professional teacher. She never lied for as long as I knew her as my mother. She would have said it. My father also just passed on. But people who know me, a few people around me, know this story. And Bernard L. Bernard knows this story. From that wow. day, I told myself, hey. And the gentleman who said, you are going to America in 90 days. Exactly 13 days, I started getting calls from America to come there and then uh, lecture in, you know, some of the universities there. I said, hey, what is happening? Had you applied? Never. What happened was that the African history class that I, <laughs> I, I teach on radio, there was a professor in America who was a constant listener. listener. He used to send messages, messages, Professor Albion Mens. He's also retired now, but he's still alive. Then he called me one day and said, Black, uh, right now you're at home, you're not really doing anything, right? Can you come to America, my university where I teach? They want somebody to come and teach African history and blah, blah. And I don't doubt you. I know you can do it. Can you come? I said, hey, I'm going to teach white people. I don't have their accent. <laughs> How am I going to do it? He said, Black, are you coming? I said, yes, I am coming. 
bam, visa came, bam, 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 bam. Before I realized, and I was on a plane to Missouri, University of Central Missouri. To go and teach African history. I went and taught African history, and it's online. I taught African history, and I was voted the best lecturer in the university for that period because they are lecturers. What they do, KSM, is I mean, you've lived in those areas, so you know. Modern times, what they do is that they have a setting projector, whatever they call it, it comes on the screen, mm -hmm. and then they hold something, they press, mm -hmm. and then the mm -hmm. thing shifts, mm -hmm. and then they are showing mm -hmm. pictures. And I didn't know that. I only knew the chalk. <laughs> so I went into the lecture halls with their chalk. With, with, they said they didn't have chalk, marker. So I took a setting <laughs> marker, yeah. went in there, and I was spelling and writing, and they were overwhelmed at the way I was able to spell words. Americans don't like spelling too much yeah so could spell everything write everything draw diagrams instead of just blowing the picture of the diagram there i drew the diagrams and i did all that and i didn't look in a book i was flowing and all that look a class that was supposed to be for about uh, 11 people all of a sudden became like a class for about 30 people they had never seen that because out of some kind of whatever they wanted to come and see this African teacher who covers his hair and then he mm. speaks with a certain mm. accent that they couldn't really tell. Mm -hmm. And the whole place was packed. Even the witchcraft class came to my class. There was a class that taught witchcraft and all that. Mm -hmm. The head of department there, you know, they all came to my class. And I had a good time. When I was leaving, they didn't want me to go. How long were you there? I was there for three months. Three months? Yes, and they wanted me to stay. And I said, no, my work in Ghana wasn't done. From there, I went to the University of North Carolina. They had heard about my exploits at the, uh, what is it called? UCM, yeah, University of Central Missouri. And then they invited me over to the University of North Carolina, Asheville. I remember on the hills there. I said, oh, I finished with my team. I'm going back to Ghana. I said, even if it's one day, could you come and just give one lecture to the people? And I went. And the whole area some people brought me fruits some brought me that ksm this was all prophetic and at, around those times any church that i said let me hide myself and go and listen to what they were doing especially the prophetic i'll go and hide at the back cover myself with a hood quietly at the back back the prophet will be preaching and he would mention my indigenous name not the black rasta is there anybody here called by this name who was born on a Monday? I would say, it's me, but I'm not going to respond. Then he'll be moving towards me. Ah, the person is supposed to be around here. Then he'll mention another thing. Then I'll just stand up. Then they'll be shocked because it's me. It's Black Rasta. It's Black Rasta. Then they would say one or two things. So me, there are people who will say things about the prophetic. Of course, we have charlatans in the business as well who can tell you anything. My personal experience will never let me disrespect it. What I saw from Bernard Elbenat, even Otterbill's church, oh Jesus have mercy. I went to Otterbill's church and I was directed to the only prophet of the church is called Prophet Anno. I went to Prophet Anno the who moment he saw me. Who dared you to go there? Uh, somebody, one of his officials okay. directed me that, oh, if I wanted to talk to a prophet, uh, Otterville was not a prophet. He was not operating in the prophetic like that. But there was a prophet of the church who was called Prophet Anon. So they directed me to his church and I went there. All in the quest of getting knowledge. When I went, the moment the man saw me, he started telling my history. You. You were supposed to be this. You were supposed to be that. You were supposed to be that. But God has decided that you will be this, whether you like it or not. Blah, blah. And... I was like, what? What is happening? Am I going crazy? I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't, you know. Well, so this is my experience. And to cut it, to finish it, around that time, KSM, I mean, I come from a Muslim family. When my sisters who are professors in the universities here heard that this was what I was going through, they were frightened and thought that I should go to a psychiatric hospital. <laughs> Some of them would call me wow. and say, I remember my, my younger one, she would call me and say, you are not anything, you are not seeing anything. Stop embarrassing the family. It's delusional. Delusional. Yeah, no. And I said, remember that I am your big brother. Today I pray if that God that I serve 
is the God of the universe. May you see the things that I have seen with my spiritual eyes. You are not seeing anything. Please stop embarrassing the family. Three days later, she dreamt that she saw me on a mountain. I descended onto a hill. There were so many people who were gathered to hear a message. And then all of a sudden, I came out of a cave preaching and healing. And then she called me. She said, she called me. And when I looked at her, I said, quiet. And that's In her it. dream. In her dream. That week, throughout the whole month, anybody who called me had one thing to say. People who hadn't called me for years, they called me. Hey, Black, how are you? So yeah, yeah, fine. Everything good. So yeah, hey, Black, hmm. I had a dream about you yesterday. Hmm. Uh -huh. oh, oh, really? What was it about? I saw you wearing all white, preaching at the market square. I said, really? Oh, wow. When five people called me like that, all the other calls that came in, I told them what they were going to tell me. Because it was the same, the same thing, conversation, including my very good friend, Lagazi, who didn't believe in anything. I hadn't spoken with him for about two years. He said he had the same dream. He said, oh no, Black Rasta is not this kind of person who believes in this Bible, Bible thing. Yeah. Let me not even call him and he will embarrass me. He went into the room and there was a certain kind of weight on him to pick his call, phone and call. And when he called, he said, Black, I'll be. I said, cool. You good? He said, good, yeah. Uh, I had a dream about you. He said, oh, okay, you saw me in all white preaching at the market square, right? <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah. How you know? Not, not <laughs> How did you know? I said, because that is what everybody is telling me. So, okay, I said, my journey has been a different journey. Hmm. And a lot of the people that I saw, even in Nigeria when I walked on the streets, somebody would just stop me and tell me, Omo, I have a word for you. You have been called by God. Wow. Yes. No, I'm, I'm listening with such rapt attention yeah. because maybe I was like you. Yeah. yeah. Before. Because I don't believe in anything yeah. prophetic. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I actually said that mm. the first real prophet that I meet mm. will be the first real prophet. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. I, I, I totally, you know. So I, I want to see. Maybe I'll go and dream about you. Chaos <laughs> maybe I was worse than you. Really? You know what happened? I used to <laughs> criticize T.B. Joshua to the point that his church called to beg. That's still criticizing the, him. Yeah, we beg you. We know that you don't believe in our faith. But please, his freedom of worship. I said, tell your man to stop stealing from the people. I remember I said it. You know that when I was going through this, I was watching Emmanuel TV. Just watching to criticize. Watching. And a call came from Nigeria. I saw it. I picked it up. Hello. Uh, is this Black Rasta? I said, yes. Uh, man of God wants to talk to you. Which man of God? Which Who? Then TB Joshua was the line. My name is Senior Prophet TB Joshua. God has asked me to speak with you that he has called you. Can you come to Nigeria? Look, it sounds like an Anansi story. Those who know the track record, that this is Black Rasta who speaks and says it the, the way it's supposed to be said, no corners and all that, it wouldn't benefit me if I told lies. This was what TB Joshua did. Should I send you money to come over? I said, no problem. Should I buy your ticket? No, I'll come. I went there. I was with him for so eight God days. So God told to call you? Exactly. Miraculous. I went to Nigeria. I was on the mountain with TB Joshua for eight days praying. Around the same period. So when I returned, I just told myself, if I don't follow that God who has been talking to me in my dreams, in fact, I will suffer. Yeah. I'm listening to you and I almost feel like, uh, do I have permission to make a, a movie out of this? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> no, yes. No, I mean, I mean, serious, but to me, it's like, really? Yeah. These things happen? Yeah. yeah. I mean, people who know me, who have followed me, they know that, ah, Kewa. I went to Kewa and he was also trying to talk about prophecies and I shut him down and told him, oh, you guys, you can't even tell me where your Bible is coming from. Mm. This guy, this guy, that guy, philosophies, a lot of philosophies I give to them, they were all shut up because they didn't even understand the philosophies. Mm. You see? And he also started prophesying. My prayer is that if it is your calling, may you also see the dreams that I saw. 
may you also be touched by the same God who touched me. So that when you sit on this show again, you say that, hey, when Black Rasta came here and went a day or two or three days later, this was the dream that I had. And the whole Ghana would get to see it. Because I went through it, I humbled myself, and I took it. And when my bishop told me that God said he should ordain me, but first I had to go to the Bible school. Which bishop was this? The bishop said to two. Bishop said to two. Yes, Samuel said to two of the Breakthrough Family Ministry. So he called him and said, God has told him to no, ordain For me. him, I knew him from Takrade. Mm. And then in, when I started going to the churches, I went to Prophet Nigel. I went to this person, that person, just to listen and find my roots. I met him too. And he also gave me some prophecies like that. So Ooh. one day he called me and said he was coming to Accra. I said, well, I'll join you when you come. I'll come to your church. And then I started going to his church to hear him. Very brilliant man of God. One day he was preaching, prophesying to people, and he told me that, ah, Black, I'm hearing the voice of God, and God is telling me in the spirit that I should ordain you. I said, so if, if it is God who is saying it, why not? But first, I will never ordain you just on hearing the voice of the Spirit, you must go to the Bible school and get to know the Word of God. So you went to Bible school? I went to Bible school. Where? Completed the Bible school, the Breakthrough Family Ministries Bible school. That How was long? where I went. I was there for one year, one whole year and a few months. And then when it was all done, I was ordained with seven other people. You know, everybody wore a suit and I told them I couldn't wear a suit because I didn't believe in suit. He actually bought me a suit, brown, brown suit. I should wear what that. did you I, wear? Yeah, I wore my African print, and then they tied something around my neck. They call it collar, <laughs> you know, <laughs> around my neck, and then I, I So you were ordained? It. I was ordained. So you are now reverend? I'm not a reverend. I am a minister of God. Oh, and you're not a reverend. My ministry is not the church ministry. Where I go to the church to preach, I could go there. My ministry is to go to the valleys and climb the mountains, the ghettos, where drug addicts are, people who are hard in listening to the voice of God. They are those that I'm sending. Have you I'm been going, going to, to those areas? I've been going to them. That's why I'm here to talk to you. <laughs> people like that, like Christ said in the Bible, that I came for the sick, not the healthy. Mm. I don't truly believe in too much of the church because mm. I want to believe that people in the church know Christ already. Mm, mm. You don't want to preach to the converted? No. I go to evangelize. That's why I am on the patriotism tour. All the regions of Ghana, when I talk to them about patriotism, I take the opportunity to preach to them without saying that this is the Bible because Christ himself was a radical character. He was. He yeah. came and broke down all the foundations of religion and introduced us to spirituality. When he said, those of you standing on this mountain calling God, 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 a time will come. Anywhere you stand, God will hear you. All the sacrifices you bring here, and say sacrifice is better than obedience. Hey, no need for sacrifices anymore. Go to God directly. And when you read Otabel's book, Beyond the Rivers of Ethiopia, it's a black book. It talks about the Bible being black. And when you read it, you will get to understand that, no, the Bible is our own story. It has been tampered with. There are irregularities in the Bible, no two ways about that. New Testament is so different from the Old Testament, but that was what Christ Very, came very for. different. He came to destroy religion and give to us spirituality, which is the end product of religion. That's what I believe. Christ came to destroy religion. Religion. And give us spirituality. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you glad I, I took this tip for this occasion? <laughs> Maybe it was God talking to me. Oh. Yes, yes. During the break, you know, when we came back, yes. you know, we had hit a very high point on corruption. Yes, yes. I said, yes, next yes. week we'll talk about this. For real. But as soon as I came back, I said, ah, this guy, I've heard he's an ordained minister. It hit me hard. Yes, I said, why does KSL want to talk about this? <laughs> Let's talk about the economy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just tell me that? Yeah, let me find out more. Because, yeah. because, because the profile mm. of an ordained person yeah. is, for me, mm -hmm. more tamed. Yes. You know, yes. More, 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 more tamed, more structured in their thinking and their utterances. Yes. You know? yes. And the way you talk, ah. frankly, Brutally frank, as a matter of fact. You are in the spirit. 
You are you in know? the spirit, yes. The way you talk, I was like, eh. Mm -hmm. So well, is it true that he was ordained? That's what brought this whole thing oh up. Oh, my God. You see, that's the same thing I was saying about Christ when he came. They wanted him to be streamlined. The same kif and kin, that style. Yeah. Oh, Moses walked like this. He talked like this. So you should also be doing like that. His people were fasting. But you guys are gluttons. You are all eating. You see, on the Sabbath, you guys are still working mm. and eating. And he told them, yes, I came to fulfill. But he was actually breaking down. Metaphorically, he was fulfilling. Because religion is the beginning of spirituality. Religion is like baby food. If you remain in religion where every Sunday you have to wear your clothes mm. and go and pray to God till Sunday comes, you don't know God, you are religious. And mm. that book, Beyond the Rivers of Ethiopia, will tell you more about that. It's a small book you can read in 30 minutes and all that. You see, so Christ said, now get to your father. No more between us. Go in there and talk to him directly. And when the people asked him, how do we pray? Maybe they were expecting that you have to bring a pigeon and bring a certain <laughs> this. They said, ah, just open your mouth and say, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Speak to him. You don't need anything. For me, Christ is my hero. I like radical people like that. They criticized him. They beat him up. They tortured him. But his word was his word. He stood firm and told them that, hey, this is how it's supposed to be done. Where people were gathering and doing things like robots, he broke that jinx and said, now you can pray anywhere. I mean, I belong to other religions, names I don't want to mention because of religious polarity mm -hmm. in our mm -hmm. nation. Mm -hmm. You have to wash Rest your Rest hands Rest and legs. Reverend Rasta, yeah. sir, I know you know. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend, let me hold you there for one second. That's right. Let the commercial break. Okay. Now that you have, you have, we are going to come back. And when we come back, I don't know whether the, the spirit will lead me on. <laughs> maybe we go back to corruption and Ghana, or maybe we stay on the spiritual thing. I don't know. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> KSM Show. Is it the luxurious rooms? Or the serene green surroundings? Is it the tempting swimming pool? Or the classy conference room? Or the cute gift shop? Maybe it's our chef's array of cooking delights. Whichever way, it's all about Cactus Creek. A most respected hotel. 055-039-5007 Hi! My name is Angela Metal, a massage therapist at Cactus Creek. My job is simply to pamper you with the three hours, to relax you, to revitalize you, and to rejuvenate you. Come and let me pamper you. 055 Most of you are loving my jacket. Mr. Sao, I am a rough.
The jacket is provided by Asepa Essentials. So if you want some, this is the number to call. 0247-661983. So call Asepa and get yourself a pretty decent jacket. KSM Show. Uh, my name is Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo. I have almost been following the program of KSM for the past 20 years. It's a program I've always been watching carefully. In fact, before he came on uh, Pan African, he used to be on another station, I can't remember now where the program had been so interesting. And I will call on all Ghanaians who are very much interested in objectivity and also the history of this country to always watch this program. It's a program that is educative and very, very, very interesting. Thank you. We're back, we're back, we're back. And I, I can tell that in the commercial break, there were a lot of uh, tongues wagging, man. Did you hear Rasta? Blah, 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 blah. But anyway, um, I'm teasing him. I'm calling him Reverend Rasta, but, but no. But no, this is a really, really, really interesting thing that you have talked about, you know. I have said on many occasions, when sometimes, I don't know, back in the day, I think it was way back in the, when I first arrived, I, I think it must have been 96. I think I was the first person on radio to publicly take on fraudulent pastors. To the point that you won't believe it, some were calling me Antichrist. Wow. There's a name of a pastor I won't mention. He's a big time pastor now. Mm. He committed a whole sermon on bashing me on the pulpit. Wow. Somebody called me and said, listen, listen, listen to, I won't mention, I'll tell the name of, uh, of mm. You know, and this guy was tearing me down. Don't listen to this uh, guy. He has come from the States. He's on Vibe FM talking blah, 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 blah. That's as antichrist if I ever saw one. Oh, this man tore me up. You know, because back then, you know, I have very, very different views on religion and Christianity, everything. You know, I, I remember on record me saying that Christ was not a preacher. He was a teacher. Mm. Mm. And I said, Christ did not come to teach any religion. Wow. It was a spiritual, you know, things like this. Correct. But anyway, I got my bashing. Wow. You know. Wow. I got a really, really bad bashing for it. Mm. You know. Yeah. And you were right. You know. Yeah. And so uh, when I heard that you had been ordained, I was like, okay, so where, where is he to the left or to the right of Christ? You know. I mean, I, I was surprised because yeah. your yeah. character didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look like somebody who would even hang out with TV exactly. Joshua. As you were bashing him anyway, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, yes. <laughs> I remember when, you know, I was going through this and the message was spreading, a hey, black raster, God has touched him all, a hey, black raster. And then they said, uh, Archbishop Duncan Williams. I mentioned his name because this is the truth. He had asked for me to come over so that at least he would support me with prayer. I like the idea because he's one of the topmost men of God in the nation, if not the whole of Africa. But his assistant who was going to lead me to him told me that it would be better I cut off my locks so that the man of God could pour oil on my head. I said, then I'm not seeing him. Mm. If I have to cut my locks, I have to hear the voice of God myself. These are deep decisions that I took and I am not cutting these locks until I hear from the voice of God. Maybe until God himself shapes me. Mm -hmm. Then I know that this is what God wants to do. That is why you hear me still talk my things. Because mm -hmm. when Christ came, he was the same Christ. He wasn't a gentleman. He was a radical. He whipped people in the synagogue. Chased them out. Sometimes he even called them cockroaches and fools. 
Today, when you are a man of God and you call somebody a fool, the same Bible says you go to hell if you call somebody a fool. Raka. It's in the Bible. See, but he called people fools, cockroaches, snakes, sons of snakes, and so on and so forth. He was a radical. So I see myself as that person. We have been docile for too long. A man of God is supposed to be prompt and whatever. Yeah. He's supposed to be this. He doesn't have to mm. say this. No, mm. no, no. That's mm. not me. Mm. I am not that man of God. My calling is for the ghetto people who are on drugs. My calling is for the leaders to whip them into line to be able to do the proper thing like mm. Christ did. Mm. My thing is supposed to put my nation and the whole of Africa on a proper footing. What gospel is better than the gospel that tells people to have common sense so that their mothers will not uh, bear children on the bare floors of the hospitals? What mm, gospel mm. is better than the gospel that will tell the people to stop stealing the taxpayers' money? What gospel is better than the gospel that says do not sell this nation that has gold and mm, diamond and cocoa mm. to the IMF and the World Bank and we keep going begging? What gospel is better than the gospel that says always speak the truth and don't lie? That is what I'm doing. If you are waiting to see me sell holy water and sell holy creams, and holy what and holy what, you might not see that because I am not that kind of person. I have a whole different calling. And KSM, my journey, I thank God that I live long enough to be able to see this calling. I never mm. for once thought that I would one day be on this journey. Mm. Because I had read so much. Even when I was in America, I taught religion as well. World religions. You know, there are religions that do not even have the God factor, like Scientology. Mm. People think that religion must always have God. No, Scientology does not believe in mm. God. There's no God factor in it, you, you know? And we also have extra where it is, those people, blah, 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 and more. Mm. Mm. So it's not every time religion talks about God. So if you stay religious and <laughs> KSM, you see, even the word religion itself, it comes from the Latin religionim. Religionim. It means the worship of sacred things. Mm. The worship of sacred, of sacred things. So if you worship this, that's religion. a religion. Things. When are you going to move away from worshipping things and worshipping the creator of the things? Mm. See? So that is the journey I am mm. on. Quick, uh, do you pray? Yes, I do. A lot. I'm a very prayerful person. And to, it's good to, to God. It's mm. one of the reasons, you see, KSM, that I couldn't see myself waiting until it's some time. This is the time to pray. Then I go and wash my face or my hand and then go and pray. Mm. I cannot even touch some religious books mm. if I haven't washed my hands and my face. Mm. No. I should be able to go to God anytime, anytime even when I'm want. giving yeah. my wife a doggy style and I feel like praying, I should pray. If I'm lying on my bed naked, I should be able to pray. If I'm on the WC, I should be able to pray. So when I'm praying, it moves me. You know, the human being is half physical and half spiritual. That is why, KSM, we all would go through a state that is called death. This flesh will go away. You mm. only need it here on earth. Mm. To be able to be identified, it's like a label on a bottle. Your shape is that bottle, the shape of the bottle. And that label on it is you. It tells who you are. Now, when you leave this earth, you don't need that flesh anymore. It goes back into the soil. Your spirit continues to live. Loosely, we'll call it a spirit. And where you are going, you don't need this body. That is what I believe in. The human being will not walk the earth again like this after death. Like some people believe that there's some heaven somewhere where people will go and see. I mean, some religions say there are beautiful virgins that will be given to you when you go to heaven, mm. rivers of honey and milk. I don't believe in She's all that. Those gold. are all yeah. abstract things to entice you to do good. But what I believe, the heaven that I believe in is when this body goes away into the earth, you will still live and go into another phase 
But you wouldn't need this flesh to be able to identify KSM or to identify Joe or Mensah. You are in another world. Remember, it's half spirit and half man. The Bible says that he created us in his own image. That is why when you are worshipping God, don't see God as a certain man sitting somewhere. Or God is a spirit. You are God. God is in you. That is why you have to listen to the God in you. Pray, then you pray. How many times have you been walking on the street and something tells you, go back home? And you don't know why you are going back, but some force tells you, go back home. You go into your house and boom, the ground there breaks open and people are falling inside. You're going to join a car. Then you have a feeling that you don't want to go anymore. You stay back and the car involves in an accident. Aeroplane crashes. It's the God in you, that spirit. That is why through dreams you are able to connect with that higher spirit and it tells you things that you ordinarily would not hear on earth. I mm. believe in that. Mm. Are, there, are there some special people who, if you're talking, for example, about uh, you're almost going to go and on, a, on, a, on a journey and you say, oh, Charlie, me cry, let me forget it, I'll go next week. And then the plane that you're supposed to ride in or the car you're supposed to ride in crashes killing maybe 10, 20, whatever people. Those people didn't have that spirit to tell them, don't go. Beautiful what? question. Beautiful question. Mm. You see, two ways I'll answer this. Let me go quickly into this. Those people who perished, it probably was their time to go. Remember, everybody would go. Mm -hmm. Some of them might not die. They might be involved in some bad accident, break their blah, 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 and that will lead them towards their right paths. Now, did they not pray? Mm. It's not every time your prayer would be answered. It's like a son going to the father and saying, Father, I want toffee. And he said, no, nah, you can't have the toffee. It didn't mean that you didn't pray. But the father looked at it and thought that Toffee, you've eaten too much toffee, it will destroy your teeth and even make you sick. So it's not every time the prayer is answered, even though it is answered in one way or the other. Now, when you pray, it means you are getting closer to God. Prayer means talking to your father. How do you talk to your father far away? You have to get closer to him. So you are protected more than somebody is far away from the father. It's just simple and very understandable. A man who gets closer to God, a man who is always praying, is closer to God if he's genuine. Therefore, there will be a stronger protection on you than the man who is not. Mm. Praying to God is like being in a mosquito net. When the mosquitoes come, they can't reach you. <laughs> now, if you don't pray to God, you are like sleeping outside the mosquito net. Mm. So when the mosquitoes come, they will come after you. Mm. It's like the barber shop. A barber said that he did not believe in God. Nothing would make him believe in God. He sent the pastor away and told the pastor never to talk to him about God. But the pastor said, no problem, give me a haircut. I came here for a haircut, not necessarily to preach. He got the haircut, and as he was walking out, he saw a man with a kinky hair, bad hair, looking like a, a mad person. And he went back to the barber and said, ah, Baba, you said there's no God, right? That is why people are dying. Whether they pray or not, they are still dying. So there's no God. It means there's no barber here in Texas, right? He said, what do you mean? I'm a barber. I saw a kinky-haired man. His hair is so mm -hmm. bad and so loose. How come he is there? You are telling me that people are suffering, still knowing God and praying to God, yet they are suffering. There's a kinky man. What did the barber say? Because he didn't come to my barber shop, I would have given him a clean haircut. <laughs> and the pastor said, same way. If you don't go to God, you won't get that haircut. <laughs> so KSM, the closer you are to God, the more protected. Of course, there are times that you go through trials. They are supposed to shape in you and to make you stronger. That's what I believe. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> No, Russ, I and you will sit down. We'll have, we'll have more conversation, for real, you know. For real. Yeah, I have, I have a whole set of different ideas. I want to I'm pick excited. your brains about, you yes. know. But let's move on, you yes. know, because I, I have uncovered something that really, when I had the first that you are ordained, I said, I, I have to find out more. Mm. And I, I think I found out more than more. And thank you.
and I'm sure many of my viewers out there are like, hey, really? Really? <laughs> you know? So people may now see you and call you and ask you questions. <laughs> and like, yeah. But now, with all this fiery, God-focused person that you are, what in, is in it, this new energy that, that, that burns in you to bring out such, such a passion yeah. for yeah. nation building, you know, such a passion for uh, what, fire dropping down yeah. and mm -hmm. consuming people that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand it clearly. Uh, I am tired of being called a useless nation. I am tired of being branded mm. poor mm. when I'm actually rich. Mm. I am tired and even more frustrated to learn that my children and children's children would grow up and inherit this same misery. Mm. It behoves me to stand firm and destroy that link mm. and put them in their right state of a country that was called the Gold Coast, not because they just were being fictitious, but because they saw gold on the coast. We have a lot of cocoa, diamonds, everything. Why should we be poor? Remember Martin Luther King. He was also a, a, a gospel person. Look how fiery he was. Yeah. He led a million people to march out at Salem. He was able to bring the whole of the black race together to tell them that, listen, God loves everybody, and if these people are not going to love us and dehumanize us, let's come together and fight them. That was Jesus speaking. Oh, yes. Somebody will say, oh, love each other. It doesn't matter whether you are white or black. Hey, <laughs> at a time that black people have been refused entry into buses, you sit down in a bus because you came early, and then a white man comes in there, you are told to stand up and go stand at the back because you are black. Hey? Eh? All these things you cannot play in public parks because they've been reserved for white people, even in Africa, South Africa, right yeah. there. Yeah. We saw what happened to our black folks. And you say you are a Christian. And for that matter, it shouldn't concern you because we are all human beings and we should all preach. No, we're going to gather all black people and fight you and put common sense in your head. Mm. If the Bible fails, force must be applied. Mm. If the diplomacy of the Bible is failing, Come together, let's use force and let them think because Jesus used force. Ship them when they refuse to think. <laughs> Show some love. <laughs> well, well, I know you say you're not that kind of preacher, but this may be attractive to a whole group of people who will now be looking at being Christ like as being radical. Yeah. And they might want to have a church and you lead them. <laughs> well, well, yes, I can see where it is going. It is true. I yeah. have always tried to let the people know that I'm not a leader. Okay. I am the maker of leaders. Hmm. You're not a leader. No. You make leaders. I make leaders. I am not a king. I am a king maker, like Saul in the Bible. I know my destiny. I know there are great people. I can look at the young man standing here and I say, that, ah, he has the qualities to be able to fit here. Let me make him a leader there. My duty is to sit back and whip them into line when they are going wrong. Bring them and tell them that this, 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 guide them. We all cannot be kings. We all cannot be leaders. Jesus Christ was not a leader. Jesus Christ, when somebody even met him and said, Hey, master, good master. He said, why collect thou me good? There is none good but the Father. He didn't want to take credit for anything. Even when he healed people, he said, Hey, woe unto you if you go out there and tell anybody that this was what happened. He didn't want to take credit. In these days, you don't find people like that. Everybody wants to be in the limelight. There are people that have called and given prophecies too. As to when the Spirit speaks and it comes to pass in their lives. Of course, some didn't come to pass. You see, mm -hmm. but as a growing up evangelist, we make room for mistakes. And I am not ashamed to say that. So when I go on the road 
I tell them I'm not a leader. Mm. But I see the quality in this person, and I can make him a leader here, and the congregation can be with them. I can hop from congregation to congregation, instilling in them the discipline of that radical Christ. Mm. Mm. That's what it is. Put your hands <laughs> together, man. Do I say amen to this? Amen. <laughs> and let the church say amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Black Rector, let me say it's it's just <laughs> been an amazing session I've had with you, and so are all the viewers. You know, this has been very very enlightening. You know, um, I, I mean I'm I'm with you on the tip that this country, that the that the spiral done was it's too much. You know, it has to be stopped. It really does. You know, I'm with you. You know, and 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 and, and also understanding this whole concept of uh, uh, the radical Christ and how that should be applicable to situations like this. Yes. But in short, I think I've learned a lot today from you. Thanks. So have many people, yes. And your music, you know, we said it, something that I, I fell in love with when I saw it, yeah. you know. But you're saying a whole album is coming out. Tell us a bit more about it. Yes, it's a 20-track album, as we said, and it's called The Salaga Soldier. It's a very powerful album. I sang in nine different languages on this album. Nine? Yes, and the whole album was recorded live. I am glad to tell you that within two months, it's become the biggest reggae album in the world. It has. And Barbershop is the biggest single, reggae single in the world right now as we speak. Now that song features Anthony B, who is a Jamaican reggae legend. Oh my God. Mm. When he heard the song at the time of recording, he said, Oh, what a tune. What a tune. And Ghanaians, Nigerians, oh my God. Almost every week I'm told that it's number one in this African country, wow. that African country. And the I Baba, am the Baba Shop one. Baba Shop. Yes. It's a very powerful song. It says, Rasta man don't go in a Baba Shop. Rasta man can sit in a Baba chair. To my combi, 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 and treme, treme, treme. Shevi, 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 and koti, koti, koti. Banga, langa, banga, and bogo, yaga, yaga. Carry, go, go, and bring, come, come. Too much watchy, 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 no, nothing, nothing, nothing. Koki, 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 no, kali, kali, kali. I don't know why. I will go to Baba Shop. Or even say, in a little baba chair, in the shop, too much cutty, 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 in the shop, too much trimmy, trimmy, trimmy. I don't like this, a combi, combi, combi. I don't like this, a shabby, 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 too much watchy, 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 and so, 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 so. Banga, langa, banga, and bogo, yaga, yaga. That is how it goes. <laughs> Just a man of God, man. <laughs> and KSM, the song is spiritual. Yeah. It is not yeah. only about going to the barber shop. Mm. You know, spirituality will tell you that your head is your glory. Mm. Any man that cuts off your hair is taking your glory away. So you might just see it to be a barber shop, a barber. But spiritually, deeply, it's talking about the destiny killers. Mm. People who are around you. And they are only looking for your downfall. They are your barbers, your mm. destiny barbers. Mm. They mm. are trimming mm. your destiny mm. off. Some says Baba was Delilah. Jesus Christ says Baba was Judas. And much more. Uh, Joseph's barbers were his brothers. So that is what the song mm. is talking about. Mm. Okay. And I am okay. loving where it's going. Fantastic. <laughs> Show some love one more time, man. Thanks a lot one more time. And it, it's been great. It's been great, man. I think we'll do this again sometime soon. But uh, I'm going to be calling you to, to have some other discussions. And uh, we will trim it, trim it, trim it, and call it, call it, call it, call it. Just a lot, y'all. The man dropped after. Until we come your way again, KSM signing of thanking Black Rasta. In the words that I've used since Black Rasta was a baby, Black Rasta signed off for me, man. We are of here.
the KSM Show.